Okay, I'm approaching the uh, spot that I think might offer good views. Once we get up here, we'll take a look, see what we got. I'm going to pick something out here. Got a nice little area to paint, to set up, I mean, right in here. So let's pan the location. You have some smoke stacks over there, which are nice. Okay, I'm going to set up and paint, pick something out. Hi everybody, this is Bruce. We're out here for another plain air adventure. And uh, what I'm going to be painting today is that scene way over there with the cranes sticking up. And we're going to be doing it, I'm going to be using this panel, but I'm going to Drive off the line and make it more of a horizontal, very thin horizontal. Uh, I just had this one panel in my box, so that's what I'm, and then if I, the leftover space I can use for whatever. So uh, let's get started. I want to thank you for joining me and for uh, all you new subscribers, thank you for checking out my channel. And for everyone else, I want to thank you for watching my channel from the beginning. And if you're new to the channel, thanks for checking it out. Okay, I've uh, done the scribing off the line. It's going to be a 6 by 12 and I put in line for the horizon, very low horizon, so I can get the cranes, the height of the cranes, and to have the cloud cover behind there. Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. Uh, first off, I just want to say how funny it is. I have my hat on backwards in my haste to uh, get rolling here with the painting. I just stuck my hat on and started walking. So it's pretty funny. I'm sure people looking at me are like, what the heck, typical artist, you know. But uh, here I am just kind of getting some uh, base layers in. Uh, this time I kind of started sketching in with uh, some little pieces of a uh, local color of what I was looking at rather than my typical umber sketch. And uh, I usually do my umber sketch, but eh, tried something different. Now here I am putting in some base tones for the shadows of the trees, trying to get a very quick impression of the scene that I can build on in future layers of paint. And trying to, you know, it's a pretty small brush, the nice flat quarter inch I think it is about my Rosemary and Company. Very good little workhorse, I tend to go to that a lot. And getting some sky in there, it was a pretty interesting uh, sky that day and the way it kind of helped lead for some directional lines in the scene just trying to do a little blending it was like a milky hazy effect in the distance there and I've stepped up the brush size a little bit using a bristle filbert cutting around some of the distant tree shapes creating the shapes I want with the sky color. Now finishing up the sky, putting in uh, again some more deeper, richer blues towards the top. And I thought I did a pretty good job with these clouds in this piece. Clouds can be very difficult. I'm being careful on the distant horizon uh, with the trees to cut around and then I'll use a bigger brush to feather that out like this. And then the bigger brush To do that. That way you don't have too much of a small stroke going up into your broader strokes. Now what I'm doing here is I'm taking this brush and where this meets the tree line, now that I've uh, set back the tree line a bit, I'm going to split 
the line here very lightly with this to soften it a bit at, like this. Very soft touch. And then after a little bit of dragging, I'll just wipe off the excess on a paper towel. And I'm going to experiment doing a little more over on this side where it's really further back. Okay, now I'll be working on some uh, shadows in here. As you noticed, I, paint, I painted all the shapes of the landscape first, rather than paint around the cranes and all that sort of thing. I want to lay those in in decisive strokes. And then, of course, I'll be working on the foreground trees. But this is uh, and certain areas I'll pay attention to, obviously, because I have wet paint from the uh, background tree. So the key here is going to be laying the paint on, pinching off the excess, picking up more paint, and applying your next stroke. So then I'll, of course, uh, detail out some more in the foreground. So let's see how this goes. So I've mixed up some dark tones and I'm going to start with my darks because I want to get those to read right in, in the landscape for how far back they are. Then I'll know how light to make my lights. I don't want to put something too white or something that's kind of off in distance because even though it's sunny there is going to be a bit of uh, atmospheric perspective and uh, haze and, and like veils in between objects as it goes back even though it's not real humid today it's not as clear as it would be in the foreground. And the key here is going to be studying the shapes of the shadows and really study, decide, and plant the stroke on your panel. Try not to be timid. You can always plant it, do all your strokes, and if you need to adjust anything, pick up more paint, lighter, darker, whatever, and then go back over the the uh, area again. Don't fiddle back, back and forth like this. You'll start milking up the paint because of all this being wet. You could, if you wanted to, some uh, craft painting uh, supplies. You have this uh, chisel type of tool. It's like plastic nib. And you could experiment. This is on panel. It wouldn't work well at all probably on canvas. But you could probably wipe out the excess white paint where you're going to put a, a darker stroke so facilitate not getting that lighter color mixed in, but I don't do that. I just mix up enough paint, thick enough, and I put the stroke down. And what I'm going to be working on here is the distant collection of like the dam and other little pieces of uh, buildings and structure in the distance. Applying, I always apply my darks first and put those in there and then I'll apply my lights next to that to have contrast and of course the sun's out shining creating shadows so you will have contrast and mixing up enough paint so when I apply the stroke it doesn't interfere because I have a light touch with my brush it doesn't interfere with the distant tree line that's wet paint the key here is to pick up don't go too much too long with continuing with the stroke or applying strokes because it'll start intermixing with the background whatever colors behind it. So I pick up more paint and continue putting in heavy strokes. Be deliberate. Look at the shape. Think of the shape and then try as much as you can to put that shape down in one stroke. And you know, I can't really see every tiny little detail way over there in the distance, but I'm being suggestive about what's over there. And I think it adds some nice interest to the scene. And just building up a little bit at a time. Now putting in a few more details, and I'll come back to you in a moment. I'm uh, 
thinning my, I'm using turpentine today only, and I'm thinning the paint just a bit so it's a little more fluid. Don't get it too watery, so to speak, because then it won't lay on nicely. So just enough to get it workable. Now working on the top lit edge of the distant uh, structure there. And I can clean up around that with uh, the tree color and the, and the dark shadow color to clean up and thin out those lines even more. Uh, I kind of like to do that. Go back and forth with your brushwork. A very good way to do that. So parts where I kind of dip down here, I'll clean up with my dark paint because I don't have as steady as hand as I used to. So that's okay. Now we can cut back around that light tone with the dark. Clean it up. That's why you kind of always have a little bit of the colors uh, that you use in a piece kind of on your palette at any given time. You can dip back into them and uh, touch up areas as you go along. In some areas on this, I'm going to put in just little different tones just to have some interest because obviously I can't see every little detail way over there, but I'm going to be suggestive. Now let's work on this area with the cranes. Now I'm going to move the cranes a little bit because where they're actually at is kind of right now in the center would would be in the center of the panel so I'm gonna shift everything over here a little bit artistic license he'll still be believable I just plant and pull. Put that dark color on there and just pull it. Little touches. And if you think it might be a little too dark, you can try to go back over it with a dry, a clean brush and try to get some of that sky to mix in there or just mix up a lighter value and put that in there. And I don't want the other crane and it's not either, but be careful not to make the objects parallel to each other. Have a little interest. Have it over and angled a little higher. Like that. Now what I'm going to do for the little bits of white that I see over there is I'm going to mix some uh, titanium white with the uh, little bit of raw umber, dirty it down just a bit so it sets it back in space. Not trying to put down too many strokes to over blend. Where I see a dark, I'm trying to put the dark to pull out the highlights and such where I'm going to put the lighter tones. Don't forget some trees are just darker in value than other trees in terms of species, so you want to pay attention to that. Don't make everything the same. And if you see everything the same, change it up a bit to give variety. It's okay. No one's gonna 
be out there saying that scene wasn't like that. So got to be creative. And then it's super windy. I'm glad I weighted down everything. Okay, the palette I used today was uh, some raw umber, titanium white, ultramarine blue, cobalt blue, lemon yellow, just a touch of uh, cad yellow medium, a little bit of cad red, and some rose matter. There's what the palette looks like after I'm done. And I just used turpentine to uh, thin the paint. Oh, another thing I did too, because it's very, very windy today. Let's see, uh, show you kind of what's going on. And not so much trouble with this smaller panel, but what can happen with bigger ones is your easel can blow over. So what I did is took some cordage, probably I keep about a 10 foot piece in my pack, tied it to the handle, and then I strung it to a uh, stem of one of those bushes over there to hold the easel down. And also what I do is I bring a aluminum tent stake in case I'm not near any bushes but I have soft ground I can uh, pin it down to the ground that way and then while I'm painting and recording my tripod is held down with my backpack so I'm sure a lot of you that paint outdoors a lot have your little tricks I like to hear them and it's really nothing uh, no science about it really but this helps so you can concentrate on the painting.